in a time of confusion, when memory addresses are virtual and pointers aren't always what they seem. When every line of code can lead to disaster, you can cry, try random code changes, or just track down that seg fault and fix it. So today we are going to learn how to track down a seg fault. Now seg faults are probably the error messages that are hated most by students. They often seem really mysterious to students, but they're really quite simple. A seg fault is basically just any time that you try to access memory that you have no business accessing. So this could be a read or a write. That's not your line. <clears throat> and I really, I re <clears throat> and one of these days, hey, watch, hey, watch it. One of these. Have a blooper reel. Yeah, <laughs> and, and one of the one of these days, I'm gonna do a video on virtual memory and how the whole thing works and what actually is happening when you seg fault. But today, I just want to focus on tracking down the seg faults, figuring out where they occur, and then you know how do you go about fixing them. So let's get into it. So say I have this program that's seg faulting. The first thing I'm gonna to need to do is to make sure that my program is compiled with debug flags included. Now, if you're using Clang or GCC, this is gonna be with the dash G option. And then I just run the program in GDB. Now, when the seg fault occurs, GDB is gonna tell me what line the fault happened on. So this is pretty straightforward. You can see it right here. If the fault is happening in code that you wrote, then you just look here at the pointer, or maybe there are multiple pointers involved, but the point is that you need to look at the addresses and see which one looks wrong. So you just basically look, look at the addresses, see which one doesn't make sense. Uh, in this example, my pointer is set to null, and we know that writing to null never ends well. So if the seg fault is happening in code you didn't write, then you have two options. So first, you can blame the other programmer. You can insist that it was their fault. You can insist that, that of course, it couldn't be your code that's messing up. Uh, and sometimes it is their fault, but sometimes it's a little more complicated. So the second thing you can do is you can actually work up the stack trace until you figure out where you called into their function and make sure that there's nothing fishy about your code. So like in this case, my code is passing a bad pointer to memset. And so naturally memset is gonna seg fault. And at this point, I'm really glad that I didn't run around angrily telling everyone that memset's buggy because the bug's mine. And at this point, it's usually pretty easy to fix. Occasionally, things will be complicated. So occasionally, you'll have logic bugs that actually cascade, so the bug actually occurred a long time ago. Sometimes you'll notice that your stack trace is really long, and uh, as you work back, you'll see there are thousands of entries into it. And usually, when you see this, that just means that you actually did, had a stack overflow. So this might mean that you have code that's recursing forever. Yeah, so you need to fix that recursion. And so you need to work backwards. Sometimes you have memory corruption. So sometimes you're clobbering memory from somewhere else and that can cause the problem. So with these kinds of bugs, you can use assertions. Assertions can help you identify where the bugs happen earlier. I have another video on that. Uh, you can, I'll link to, link to that in the description. Um, you can also use Valgrind and you can use watch points in GDB, which can also help you tell when and where memory is getting corrupted. So these can be really helpful. But the rest from here, really how you solve the problem is gonna depend on your specific situation. Next time when you have a seg fault, I want you to remember these steps. Include debug symbols, use GDB to find where the seg fault's happening, identify the problematic address, and then work backwards to figure out where it came from. And then the fix usually should be pretty obvious. And if you do this, you'll be a faster, more confident seg fault finder or seg fault fixer, or whatever you call someone who finds and fixes seg faults. So I hope this is helpful, and the next, until the next video, I'll see you later. Hey, so if you like these videos... My turn! My turn! My turn! So, if you like these videos, please hit subscribe or like. Like would be good, too. I would like to get to 1,000 subscribers. It is my channel now, and I will rule the world.